Hey, this is Jason from Weekend RV Adventures, and I'm here in front of our new Alliance Valor 36 V11. Uh, you may notice that it's not the Cougar we had before, and that's because uh, at the end of last season, we picked up this Alliance Valor. We had sold our Cougar earlier last summer, and uh, we're waiting on this one to come in. It didn't come in until late, so we actually haven't even had it out on a trip yet. But today, we're going to do our first major upgrade, and that's installing some RV lock wireless latches. On the Cougar, we had them there, and uh, we loved having them. Uh, it was about three years with them on the Cougar, and it made it great when we were out camping with the kids. Uh, if we went on a bike ride or went out and did something for the afternoon, or the kids wanted to come back to the camper, no one had to worry about who had the keys or if they were going to lose the keys. Um, so we're definitely going to make that upgrade here. Just to give you a little uh, long-term review on the latches we put on the Cougar, I did notice that it didn't hold quite as well as the original latch. I'm not sure why, but uh, we definitely always made sure to lock the deadbolt especially if we were going to travel even if we were just moving around the driveway we'd always deadbolt the latch because sometimes the door would pop loose with just the latch uh, again i don't know if that was the rv lock or if that was just the uh the way it installed on the cougar i did have to make some adapter plates for the cougar um because the door cutout was too big for the lock and if you go check my previous video or take a look on the link in, to the website i'm still selling those adapter plates if you've got the same problem um, we had one issue mechanically with the latch and the circuit board uh, went out and the keypad quit working. RV Lock did send me a new one free of charge and it was about a 15 minute install to remove the latch, take the circuit board out, put the new one in and get it back and going again. Other than those uh, two minor issues, we had no problems with the lock the whole time we had it and uh, it was great. So that's why we're gonna install it again. Now one thing Alliance did not do with the Valor line is they're not doing the key to like system like many of the uh, RV companies have switched to. So right now I have locks for the baggage doors, locks for the front door, the back door, the ramp on the back um, because we've got a toy hauler this time, and then all those little round uh, cam lock latches. So I'm going to try and eliminate that as much as I can. I have uh, the compact latch here and this is going to go on the main door right behind me. And this is the one with the keypad and the key fob for locking and unlocking it. Then I also got this uh, mechanical latch, and this one's just a standard latch, but it's keyed to match the front door, so that way both my doors will have the same latch. And I've got seven of these little cam latches. Um, you'll see them when we do the install here. But uh, these will go on all those little round locks for like the front storage compartments, the uh, access for the leveling system, and those kinds of things. Now, what I can't do is I can't get the baggage locks. Um, RV locks baggage latch is for a different design, not the same one we have on the Valor here. So unfortunately, I'll still have separate keys for those. But I'm going to see uh, what we got in the boxes here and then get started on this first lock. I'll tell you how long it takes. Uh, I'll show you kind of the process. I'm not going to go real deep into it, but we'll go through that and uh, I'll let you know how it goes. So see you in a minute. All right, so the installation is going to be pretty straightforward. We've got uh, two screws on the side of the door latch here, four screws on the back that hold it on, and then over here there's the strike plate on the frame, and that's got two screws. So we've got a total of, what, eight screws we've got to remove, install the new latch, and we should be up and running. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and see what time it is and get started on the install, and then I'll let you know how long it took. All right, so we are uh, a minute and 25 seconds into the install, and I've got the old latch completely removed, and we're ready to start putting the new one in. When you're installing the uh, inside, you make sure you connect the cable, and then uh, make sure it stays tucked up out of the way as you line it up so that it doesn't get pinched in there. You may have noticed I used my impact driver to uh, get the screws in. Now I'm going to go back with a screwdriver by hand to tighten everything up to make sure I don't strip it out. Uh, just use that for removal and for getting them started to uh, make it go a little quicker. All 
right, now we're at uh, six minutes and all I have left to do is install the jam side of the latch and we'll have it all done. All right, and that's it. So now, now I'll just go through here and uh, make sure it's closing securely. All right, I'd say that one's done. Uh, so we're at eight minutes. The only thing left to do is do the uh, setup of the keypad, but I'm gonna wait, get the other latches installed, and then uh, come back and I'll do that last. All right, I've already removed the original uh, mechanical latch from the back, but I wanted to go ahead and show you a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, let me get them flipped around the same way here. So that's the uh, new RV lock latch we'll be putting on. And then this is the original one that came off. So not much of a difference, uh, pretty similar. One thing I will note is uh, the RV lock latch has a lot of plastic construction where the original one is all metal. So uh, maybe a little advantage there to the metal one, but I'll take the convenience of having the same key. All right, I just finished installing the mechanical latch on the back door and we're at uh, 18 minutes and 30 seconds. So the uh, box claims it's 10 minutes install time and so far we're a little ahead of that. All right, so now I'm on to uh, installing the little cam latches. Like I said, I've got seven of these on my camper. There's uh, one over here for the uh, air compressor bay. Then I've got the fueling bay and the uh, gas pump uh, control module cover. And then I've got a couple, three storage compartments on the front and uh, the cover for the leveling control. And I think that adds up to seven. I may have missed one there, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace those. Those were actually split between two different keys from the factory. So it'll be nice to get that down to one key. Um, this is what the new uh, RV lock one looks like here uh, you can see it's uh, very similar it's plastic again but uh, it seems to be high quality it also comes with a little pole for the outside that you can uh, put on there to get a good grip on the door to open it and then the latch for the inside and a little rubber gasket and a nylon washer so everything you need uh, these are pretty simple it's like a 7 8 uh, bolt or 7 8 nut on the back side is all it takes to hold it on so I'm gonna go ahead and get all these put on I'm guessing a couple minutes a piece for these and uh, we'll have them all on all right, so uh, this first one here is on the air compressor compartment. I'll need a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the little uh, latch on the inside. And then I've got my 7 8 ratchet set up to loosen up that nut. Oh, guess I didn't loosen it up quite enough. There we go. And that's about it to pop the original one off. So we'll put the rubber, uh, little rubber gasket on the outside here. that through the latch. Put the little nylon washer on the inside. And I'll tighten that down. While I'm tightening that down, I'll uh, just point out that this air compressor was one of the features on the Alliance Fowler that uh, sold us on this toy hauler over some of the other models. Um, having a built-in compressor and tank just uh, seemed really convenient. You can air up the tires on the camper, air up tires on your toys, uh, whatever you've got. Instead of uh, having to haul around another, another tool with you in the camper. So anything that'll uh, save some space and uh, make things easier for me, I appreciate.
All right, so we've got that snugged up, and now I've just got to put the latch on. The latch on there. I believe it's turned 180 degrees. Let's just check that before I get it tightened all the way down. Uh, no, it's only a 90 degree turn, so I've actually got to go ahead and uh, turn this 90 degrees to put it on here. So we'll put it on uh, in that orientation. Tighten up the lock nut. And that first one uh, on there and good to go. So I'll go ahead, uh, repeat that process on the other ones, and I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, well, I guess you can't expect everything to work flawlessly. So on this top baggage compartment here, uh, it's got a thicker door than the other compartments had, and the latch is hitting uh, on the inside and won't let it close. So I'm going to take this over and just try and bend this uh, down a little further and out so that I can get a little more clearance. I actually switched to the latch that was on the original one because... Uh, the RV lock one is pretty flat. This one has a little bit more of a bend to it, so I thought maybe that would be enough to uh, clear the door, but it's still not quite enough, so I'm going to bend this one a little further. I'd also noticed on some of the thinner doors that it's a little loose with the latch, so I may go back and tweak those a little bit to tighten them up. Not a big deal, but uh, just something you should be aware of. So I just got back from bending it, and you can see now it's uh, just about a 90 degree angle now, uh, so I think that should go in there. Tighten it up nice. We'll find out here in a second. It looks like that's going to work, so I'll just snug everything up. Well, it looks like we're still not quite latching, so I'm going to go put my phone in there uh, with the camera on and watch it from the inside see what happens. Well, after watching the video, it looks like bending it shortened it up too much because now it doesn't come down on an angle, so it's not catching on the door jam. So I guess I'm going to have to go back and uh, possibly bend up a new piece of metal or uh, just play with this one a little more to get it to work. Okay, so I bent it that first time. It didn't quite work out, but I took it out again and uh, tweaked it a little more. I had it a little too short, so uh, like I said, it wouldn't come down and catch the door jam. But now I've adjusted it out a little farther and... Uh, takes a little bit of a push on the door here uh, but it gives you a nice tight seal so I'd say uh, that's a success and uh, that means I've got them all installed uh, some of the shorter ones like I said I'm gonna have to go back and bend that tab to tighten them up but no big deal uh, I'm hoping to really enjoy having the RV lock on here again with the wireless keypad uh, we loved it on the last camper I'm sure we'll love it again here and I'm getting rid of about four extra keys I was carrying around the keychain so if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my install of the RV lock on the Cougar, where I went into a little more detail about programming the keypad and things like that too, go check that video out. You can also check out uh, some of the rest of my channel if you want to see more about the Alliance Valor or see some of the adventures we go on. So if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel. 
and I hope to see you again soon. Happy camping!